Hi, I'm Larry Karaszewski, and this is Trailers from Hell. Right now we're going to take a look at Dark of the Sun, starring one of my favorite cult stars, Australian Rod Taylor. He's a man's man, but there's always an intelligence behind the eyes. Probably best known for Hitchcock's The Birds, he gives a multi-layered performance here. It might actually be his best work as an actor. Let's check it out. One of the things I really love about being a film buff is the sense of discovery. Stumbling upon a movie you've never heard of before. I like to think that I know film, but every once in a while you realize you have a blind spot. Today's film, Dark of the Sun, was totally not on my radar. But about five years ago, it started to get this buzz, showing up on people's favorite film lists. Tarantino was said to be a big fan. He used some of the terrific score in Inglorious Bastards. And when I finally did catch up with Dark of the Sun, I was blown away. This is a seriously great war film. Brutal action, morally ambiguous characters, great performances, and really well directed by Jack Cardiff. Cardiff is a master cinematographer. Shot the Red Shoes, Black Narcissus, some of the best looking movies ever. But Cardiff is a little spottier when he gets into the director's chair. He gets Oscar nominated for Best Picture and Director for Sons and Lovers, but he's probably better remembered for odder stuff, like the Marianne Faithful vehicle Girl on a Motorcycle. In Dark of the Sun, Rod Taylor and Jim Brown play mercenaries who are hired by African leader Calvin Lockhart to commandeer a train into the Congo in order to save a bunch of civilians from brutal revolutionaries. But the not-so-secret plan is that they are really traveling to fetch $50 million in diamonds. Watching this film made me realize that many of my favorite war films are actually heist films. Three Kings, Kelly's Heroes, The Train, there's something about this genre combo that works for me. Now also along for the train ride in Dark of the Sun is an evil ex-Nazi played by Peter Karsten. The character is actually based on a real person, Siegfried Mueller. It's a true life bad guy. Karsten's performance is hurt because half of his dialogue has been redone by voice talent legend Paul Frees. Now of course Jim Brown is great here, he's always good, he has a real screen presence and gives the film a moral center. Another great performance comes from Kenneth Moore as an alcoholic doctor. Moore and Taylor have a bit where they one-up each other in laughter. It's a really odd scene, but it's one of the highlights of the film. Now, Taylor is reunited in this film with his Time Machine co-star Yvette Mimieu. She's very pretty, but she has very little to do here. This is a man's picture. Cardiff really pushes the action and the violence, and the last third of the movie literally goes off the rails. Mass slaughter, male rape, and some really shocking deaths. Suddenly, the film stops following the rules in a good way. The whole plan goes wrong, and the movie gets very interesting. The screenplay is credited to Quentin Werty, a pseudonym for Ranel McDougall. It's rumored that Rod Taylor was changing the plot on the set, and perhaps that's why McDougall took his name off. He shouldn't have, because the film turned out to be a keeper.